What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the Raspberry Pi 4 and I want to do some testing on it. So this is going to be my first look, initial impressions, and I will have more videos on the way. So in this video, I'm going to be testing out the Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model. I actually have a 4 gigabyte model on the way. It should be here in the next day or two. And I have cross-referenced all the benchmarks that I've run on the 2 gigabyte model with some that are online for the 4. They are pretty much exactly the same. Personally, I'd rather have the 4 gigabyte model, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be faster than the 1 or the 2 gigabyte model. It just has more RAM. It doesn't mean it's a more powerful unit. You will be able to multitask a lot better with more RAM, and if you're interested in picking up a Raspberry Pi 4 and you can only find the 2 gigabyte model, it's still a great choice over the 1. So here it is. A lot has changed in the Raspberry Pi 4 compared to the older models like the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B+. Performance is also significantly increased over previous models of the Raspberry Pi. We now have a better CPU, faster RAM, and a newer video core slash GPU unit inside of here. The overall size of the Raspberry Pi 4 has stayed the same, but they've changed the layout. So this means we cannot use older cases for the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B+. If we take a look on the left hand side, we have a Raspberry Pi 3B+. On the right is the Pi 4. The Ethernet port has been totally relocated, micro USB has been replaced with USB Type-C, and a single full-size HDMI has been replaced with two micro HDMI outputs. So now it's just a matter of waiting for the case manufacturers to get a hold of their samples so they can go ahead and create new cases for this. By the way, Flirk does have one in the works, and there's a pre-order ready on their website. I'll leave a link in the description. I'll have a full video on one as soon as I can get it in my possession. So let's take a look at the specs and then we'll get into some testing on the Raspberry Pi 4. For the CPU, we have the new Broadcom BCM2711. This is a quad-core Cortex-A72 at 1.5 GHz. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus used a Cortex-A53 at 1.4, and this might not sound like a big gain just going 100 MHz up, but these A72 cores offer much higher performance than the A53s. So clock for clock, this is a better CPU. I've had a lot of people get upset with me when I call the video core a GPU, but basically that's what we have. This is our graphics processing unit or video processing unit. It's using the new video core 6 at 400 megahertz. And by the way, I have successfully overclocked the GPU to 620 megahertz and the CPU to 1.7. I will have a full tutorial coming up very shortly. As for RAM, there's three variants of the Pi 4. 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabyte, or 4 gigabyte. They all use LPDDR4 2400 SD RAM. And this is a huge upgrade over the old Raspberry Pi 4s, and personally, this was the biggest surprise. Not the amount of RAM, I figured they would at least go to 2. 4 is awesome, but going from DDR2 to DDR4 in a little single board computer like this is a big upgrade, and this is going to help us out dramatically in everything we do on the Pi. They've added true gigabit Ethernet, dual band 802.11 BGN and AC, so we can pick up that 5 gigahertz network, Bluetooth 5.0, two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, Raspberry Pi standard 40 pin GPIO header, USB Type-C for power, they've done away with the micro USB, but this does require more power to run, 5 volts, 3 amps. And finally, two micro HDMI ports. They claim 4K 30fps if you're using dual monitors, or 4K 60fps if you're using a single. The Pi 4 has been out for about 4 days as of making this video, and I've tested some 4K playback, doesn't work great yet, but it's still really early for the software and the hardware. Running the Raspbian desktop in 4K works well, but trying to stream or play back native 4K content, it really struggles. But all of this will improve over time as more developers get it in their hands. Like I said, it's only been four days since it's been released as of making this video. So now it's time to get into some testing. I'm going to be running Raspbian Buster. You can download it from the official Raspberry Pi website, flash it to your SD card, and you'll be up and running in no time. All right, so here we are with Raspbian Buster on the Raspberry Pi 4. Like I mentioned, I'm using the 2 gigabyte model. We're going to get the same performance as the 4. Right now, we're only using 131 megabytes of memory out of that 2 gigs. So the first thing I want to do is head over to YouTube and check out some video streaming from the platform. Now, in the past, on the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B+, Plus, we've kind of struggled with video streaming from YouTube. Hopefully, it's fixed here, but uh, it's still really early. And we're not going to be checking this out in 4K because this is only on a 1080p display. I do want to make sure we are set at 1080p. 
1080p, 60 FPS, and I'll check out stats for nerds. So it definitely looks like it's struggling with the 1080p 60 FPS. I'm just going to go up a little bit more. And one of the main things is whenever we put this into full screen on the Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B Plus, really, really struggles. So we're going to test that out if it'll go into full screen mode. And my internet is plenty to buffer this out. Looks like we're struggling at 1080p. Let's take it down to 720. So that's 720, uh, full screen. Let's go back down. It's going to work a lot better when it's not in full screen mode. Looks pretty good there. I do like watching my videos in full screen though. So we're going to go down just a little bit more. Let's take this to 360. Should work great in window mode. Nice and smooth. Let's go to full screen. So even at 360p, full screen mode, still looks like it's struggling a little bit. But, like I mentioned, this is really early, and this is only going to get better over time. But overall, if you want to use a Raspberry Pi 4 to check your email and go to web pages, it does perform much better than the Pi 3 did. Now, another thing that everybody's been excited about here is video playback. Again, performance is not great right now. So this is the built-in VLC media player. I do have a couple files that I wanted to test. First up, we have a 60 FPS MP4. This is Big Buck Bunny. Still choppy. Now I did try 4K in VLC and I just got a black screen right now. I was also able to install Kodi. This is the older Krypton version. And let's see if that 4K I was talking about works in here. I don't think it's going to play it at full speed. This is uh, Big Buck Bunny, 4K, 30 FPS, MP4. And we are maxing out that CPU. So inside of Kodi, we don't have any GPU acceleration right now. We're maxing out all four cores with this 30 FPS, MP4. So starting out, Raspberry Pi 4 definitely needs some work with uh, video acceleration. By the way, there is a Libra Elect build out there and it should perform a little better than this, but it's still really, really early. As of making this video, the Raspberry Pi 4 was released four days ago. I was also able to install RetroArch, but since the software is not completely ready, we're getting around half speed on PlayStation 1 emulation. This will definitely work at full speed when everything's ready to go, but it's going to take a little bit of time to get all of these drivers in order. I also tested Sega Saturn using the Yobasi core and it runs at about 15 FPS. So like I mentioned, I did run a bunch of benchmarks. First up, we have Sysbench. Now with all of these that you're about to see, higher equals better. Pi 4 at the top, 389. Pi 3B plus, 258. Now this is straight CPU performance we're getting a significant gain over the old Pi 3B+. Same thing with Linpack SP. Even though the Raspberry Pi 4 is only overclocked from the Raspberry Pi 3B+, by 100 MHz, it's using a new Cortex A72 CPU instead of the old A53. And these A72 cores offer much higher performance over the A53s, even if they were clocked at the same exact speed. Another big jump for the Raspberry Pi 4 is the use of LP DDR4 2400 MHz SD RAM instead of the old DDR2 in the Raspberry Pi 3 or the 3B+. This RAM offers much higher throughput, be it reading or writing from it. 
We also get true gigabit ethernet on the Raspberry Pi 4. Unfortunately, my connection is only 450 megabits per second and it totally destroyed that. It ate everything it could from it, as opposed to the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, where I could only get 232. Upload speed is exactly the same for each. I'm only at 25 megabits per second, but both max that out. And finally, one of my favorite things about the new Raspberry Pi 4 is the upgraded Video Core 6 GPU. On average, with the Raspberry Pi 4, I was able to get 39.7 FPS and the Pi 3B Plus 28.4, so we have a good gain there. And keep in mind that all of these are at the stock clocks. This Video Core 6 can be overclocked. I've successfully done 620 megahertz and 1.7 on the CPU. I will have a full overclocking guide coming out soon, so definitely keep an eye on the channel. A nice upgrade over the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. It's still really early for the software and hardware. As soon as more developers get their hands on this, performance will increase in all aspects of this board. One of my main things I do on this channel is emulation, especially on the Raspberry Pi 3. This is going to be an awesome little upgrade. I do believe we're going to get full speed N64 emulation eventually, better Dreamcast emulation, better PSP emulation, but this board will never do GameCube or PS2. I also have a feeling that it's going to struggle with Sega Saturn emulation. You got to keep in mind that this is still a $35, $45, or $55 single board computer depending on how much RAM you get with it, and is still using a low end ARM CPU. You can actually buy prepaid phones for around $45 to $55 that will outperform the Raspberry Pi in straight CPU and GPU performance. But that doesn't make the Raspberry Pi 4 any less awesome. This is and will be a great little single board computer. We just need to get more of them in the hands of awesome developers out there. The Pi community is great, and I can't wait to see what they do with the Raspberry Pi 4. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I will have a ton of videos coming up on the Raspberry Pi 4. We just need to give it a little bit of time. I know everybody's super excited, including myself, about seeing RetroPie running on this, and it will eventually. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.